that would leave this poor little elephant all alone on the shelf and we just can't do that. So, whole little happy figurine family made their way into our cart. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. Sometimes I go picking with my boyfriend, sometimes it's my best friend Sue, and sometimes it's my kids. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and hopefully just maybe making a profit. Okay, well, if you saw my shopping video over on my Real Life Recovers channel, you're probably here for my haul video. Now, we don't have a whole lot out on the table because we weren't shopping for very long. We were only there for about 45 minutes. But we did pick up a couple goodies and I decided I'm gonna go over those real quick with ya. Um, we're gonna start from the front and work our way back. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we got, what we paid for it, and how much I think it's worth. Um, and then maybe in a couple weeks I'll do a sold video and tell you how much stuff sold for. So, that being said, um, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the first thing I picked up. It is a pink satin glass little tray slash dish. Uh, now, a lot of the times you will find this and the painted flowers will be just completely rubbed off. They won't be there anymore or they'll be chippy or whatever. So to find this one with the flowers still intact, I really liked it. It's not worth a ton of money. And I paid $2 for it. I would expect to get probably, mm, I wanna say 10 to 15 bucks, which isn't amazing, but I do like it. I, I'm a sucker for glassware. As you guys can probably pick up from watching my videos, I'm such a sucker for glassware. It's not a good thing sometimes. Okay, speaking of glassware. <laughs> <laughs> now this right here, for those of you who are new to getting into this, uh, maybe you've picked up some glass for yourself, this right here would be described as being an open lace. Um, why, you ask? Uh, well, because of this right here. Now this comes in a variety of different colors. You can find the opalescent glass, you can find the carnival glass, but when you see this kind of open pattern along the edge, it's considered open lace. So when you're doing your research and you want to find out more about a piece, you can simply put in open lace, blah, 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 whether it's opalescent glass or carnival glass or whatever, and it might help narrow down your search. So that being said, I liked this piece. I liked the clarity of this piece. It's just, it's, it's really nice. Uh, it's etched. It has uh, just like a little berry and leaf design on it and we paid three dollars for it so i'm thinking i could probably get between 10 to 15 dollars for it again it's nothing amazing but the best part is i'm buying it it's not going into the dumpster behind the goodwill and it's going to somebody who can appreciate it so i can sleep at night <laughs> now i bought another woven trivet I'm absolutely obsessed with these things. I don't know what it is, but I just, I love them. I love the color, the way they pop, and they're, I believe they're made in the Philippines. They're made internationally. They're vintage, of course, but I just, the, something about the colors, I just, I can't get over them. I bought three of them, no, I bought five of them the other day. I only listed three of them, I bought five of them. and. I saw this one at the Goodwill and I thought, you know what, I'll pick up another one. So I paid a dollar for this. They sell for about $5. So I'm going to make some money on this. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm obsessed with those. Something's wrong with me. You don't have to tell me. Um, okay, <laughs> let's move on to the little figurines. Okay, so I was cruising through the aisles and I spotted a grouping of figurines and I picked the best one out of the figurines and I put them in the cart and I kept going. Uh, it's this guy right here. Now I paid a dollar for him. I've since taken off the tag. He doesn't have his tag on anymore because uh, I wanted to see if there was any marking or anything. There is no marking. On a dog like this with this size and this quality, I would probably ask between 10 and 15. Usually I ask 12.95. I don't know why. It's just like my figurine number that I throw out there when there's no obvious maker. Um, so I grabbed him, put him in the cart and kept going. 
And eventually I wandered down that aisle again because when we're at the Goodwill, what we do is we just go back and forth and back and forth because you miss stuff. If you don't like go over the aisle at least four or five times, 10 times, you're not seeing everything. <laughs> so the next time I'm going down the aisle, Andrew is standing in the aisle and he is looking at the dog that was with the first dog. He's like, oh, he's so cute. Uh, yeah, he is. He's really cute. Um, we should get him. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you. He's going in the cart. But you know what? That would leave this poor little elephant all alone on the shelf and we just can't do that. So, the whole little happy figurine family made their way into our cart. We paid a dollar a piece for all of them. Uh, now, this one is chipped. But regardless, we couldn't just leave him there. We had to bring him with us. So... <laughs> So I think the elephant is gonna go live on my shelf. Now his trunk is pointing up, which is good luck. So when you're going to buy elephants, I, I, I don't know. I actually never looked to see if like up trunks sell better than down trunks, but I'm assuming because the up trunk is the sign of good luck that you would wanna look for the up trunk. You guys are gonna go on the pile in the comments and be like, that's not always true, Jocelyn. Oh, thank you very much, guys. I didn't know that. Okay, moving right along. These glasses right here, I like them because they're retro. Um, I would date these to probably about the late 60s into the 70s. They're not mid-century per se. They're a little bit later just because they're flower power. <laughs> they're orange and yellow with like a black outline. I don't know if you guys can see them there, but I've got two of them. I pay a dollar a piece for them and I would probably list them for, I'm gonna say $12 for the two of them. They're cute glasses. Oh, moving right along. We're not, we're not onto you yet, stop moving. All right, so these, oh my gosh, this dog just took like a suicidal dive. Okay, um, this right here, I liked these little bowls and I just liked the design and the color of them. I'm not sure if you can see them, uh, but they're just, they're green and blue and yellow and I just, I liked them. So I stuck them in the car and we're going to pay for them and I realized that they said something on them as we're checking out. They say Sarawak. Now I don't know where that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know who that is. That's what they say on them, but I didn't even notice that. And I like the design. So I'm thinking like, is anyone else gonna notice that that's what they say? I don't know. But they're cute little bowls and I paid. $2. I paid a dollar a piece for them. I'm thinking I'm gonna ask five dollars a piece for them. We'll see how they do. Now, in one of my recent videos, I don't know which one it was. I don't even know which video I posted recently. I'm so out of it. It's midnight. Give me a break. Okay, one of my recent videos, I had picked up a Franciscan Ivy pepper shaker. I know it was a pepper shaker because it was still full of pepper. I found that out the hard way. And I only knew what it was because I had been watching another YouTuber, Real Nifty Vintage, and I saw him talk about it, and he even said, unless you know what it is, it's not marks, you're not gonna you're not gonna know if you see it out in the wild. Sure enough, I'd watched his videos, I found one in the wild, I was so excited, I couldn't find its friend, but it's okay. I saw the design of it, and while we were at the Goodwill, I spotted these guys. Now, I know that there's the Franciscan Ivy and there's the Franciscan Desert Rose. Now, knowing what the Franciscan Ivy salt and pepper shakers look like, I saw this and I thought, you know, I think that could be the Franciscan Desert Rose salt and pepper shakers. Sure enough, they are. Now, I paid $2 for them. They're worth 15 to 20 bucks. So that's not a bad turnaround on a pair of salt and pepper shakers. I like that. I'll take it. Thank you very much. This is just an artsy crafty thing that I picked up. <laughs> it's 2005. It's dated on the bottom. I don't know who made it. They wrote it in really fancy cursive and I can't read it. Now I did take cursive in elementary school. I'm not that young. I still did take cursive. Uh, but the signature eludes me. I like it. I think, it, <laughs> I think somebody just used some modeling clay and uh, made flowers and like a little fairy and some ladybugs and 
it's the little tea light and I looked, I, I was so disappointed. We moved in like three weeks ago now and I don't have any tea lights. And I wanted so desperately to throw a tea light in there and show you guys what it looks like lit up because I think it would be so cute with the, like the flickering light. I don't have one. So that was kind of a bummer, but I don't know. There was something about this. I liked it. I paid a dollar for it. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to sell it for or if I'm going to keep it because I kind of took a liking to it. So I don't know. <laughs> Moving along. This, this lamp right here Drew picked out and I was so proud of him for picking out a lamp. It means that he's learning about lamps. Now this is obviously a Pooh Bear lamp. You can tell because Pooh Bear is on him with Piglet and Tigger and Eeyore too. Now this lamp right here, a lot of the vintage Disney lamps can sell for really, really good money. Now is this one of the ones that sells for really, really good money? No, it's not, but it does sell. You know, it, it's pretty good. Um, so I'm, I'm just I'm so proud. We paid five dollars for it. It sells between twenty-five and thirty-five dollars, which is a good turnaround on a lamp. So that's pretty nice. Like it. I think it would go cute in a kid's bedroom. So uh, it's just a pot of honey, and it's a vintage Disney lamp. Now some of the princess lamps. Oh my gosh, princess lamps can be really, really profitable. So I uh, always look at the. I know that they're not like vintage, you guys know I go into the shops and I'm looking at the vintage and antique lamps, but you should always look at those little kid lamps because sometimes they don't have to be old to be worth money. I mean, they could just be from like 1998 and be like a vintage Disney lamp and they can be pretty good. So that's my tip of the day. All right, now this. Um, I saw this and I thought well, that's kind of cool and I just kind of like just thought that's kind of cool and I kept moving on well then Drew came down the aisle and picked it up and he came to me with it and he said you know this could be worth money and we should really check this out oh, okay this is way out of my comfort zone I don't know a darn thing about bicycle seats but it is a vintage bicycle seat from the Salsa Cycles. Uh, I would pay $3 for it. There is one on eBay currently. The asking price is $150. That is the asking price. Somebody is asking $150 for it. I don't know how long it's been listed. It hasn't sold. There are no sold listings for, the, for a bicycle seat similar to this one. So I don't know how much it sells for. And I, it's out of my area of expertise. So what I would probably do with this, because I don't know much about it, is I would more than likely would pay $2 for it. I would list it on eBay for auction. I would start the bidding at $30. If it doesn't sell, I'd probably list it by it now for $45. And i totally undercut that other guy who's asking $150 because that's just the type of person I am. Okay. <laughs> Now, in one of my earlier videos, I talked about what, you know, the difference between selling on Etsy and eBay and why I choose to sell stuff where I do. Now, this right here is an eBay item. This is something I would sell on eBay. This strikes me as what I would describe as a man item. Now, sure, a, a woman could buy it. I don't see why a woman wouldn't buy it, but um, this is one of those things that I, I could see a man buying this. So, that being said, the majority of shoppers on Etsy are women. I know there are some men that shop on Etsy and there's nothing wrong with that. There are some really awesome products on Etsy, but for the majority of the demographic is women. So I'm going to be listing this on eBay. Either way, that's where it's going. Now, this is the lamp that Drew picked out. This is the lamp that I picked out. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this lamp because it's got the lamp lady stumped. That's right. I'm not proud of it, but it's got me stumped. I just, I like, I, ugh, this lamp right here. Okay, so in the 1940s, there was a lot of lamps that were this white cased glass, and they had this gold gilt on them, okay? It, it was a 1940s thing. There were a lot of lamps like that, and you, I'm sure you see them at the, anti, at, at the Goodwills and stuff, and 
it was just a really popular design back then. But that being said, this design right here, the shape of this, this lamp appears to me to be a Victorian mantle luster. Now, what is a Victorian mantle luster, you ask? Okay, so in the 1700s, <laughs> uh, the French would call the little crystal danglies lusters, okay? So they started producing these candlesticks, they were basically candlesticks, that would sit on your mantle, and they were glass like this, and they would sit on your mantle, and they'd have all these crystals and stuff, and they would put candles in them, and they were just beautiful. And those are what we refer to as lusters. Now, a lot of them have been electrified and converted into lamps. For example, downstairs in our bedroom, we have a beautiful East Lake bedroom set. And on our dresser, we have a Victorian luster, it's a cranberry, that has been converted into a lamp. Okay, so when I see this, I want to say that it is a Victorian luster that has been converted into a lamp. And this is not the original cord. Uh, a lot of you guys try to tell the age of lamps by the cords. You can't do that. You see this right here, this switchy thing? There are two sets of wires here. There's one set of wire here that is probably, I want to say, 1940s. This wire is way more modern. It's just hanging there. <laughs> But that's kind of my lesson on mantle lusters. They could sell for a lot, a lot of money, but they are still making them. So it's just a matter of finding the old ones. And one of the ways of knowing that they're old is actually the crystals. And this guy has been robbed of all his crystals. And <laughs> he's just really stumped me. I don't... Uh... Yeah, so that, that's the story behind this lamp right here. Uh, what I would like to do with this lamp is I need to get replacement crystals. I have debated whether I would like to rebuild this electrified mantle luster because right now, I don't know if you can see, it's just this little knobby bulb in here. And I feel like if I was to build this out, with an actual uh, harp and shade, it would look a lot nicer. You know what? I was gonna, I wasn't gonna do this. I'll be right back. This right here, this right here, is a Victorian luster. <laughs> Now you can kind of see the difference between this guy and this guy and you can see why I'm having issues here. Um, the gold on this one is a lot flatter than the gold on this one. It's very raised and I, I just don't know. I just don't know guys, but I think I'm going to rewire it. I've got so many project lamps. You guys keep asking about showing you how to rewire a lamp. I've got these project lamps. I have not rewired a single lamp since I started this crazy lamp lady stuff. So it's not that I'm not showing it to you guys. It's that I just haven't had the time to do it. So when I do have the time to work on some of these project lamps, for example, the other Victorian luster lamps that I picked up the other day, you probably remember them, right? Oh look, we have more. Okay, so, <laughs> I've got these ones to rewire, I've got this guy to rewire. This is just the one that lives in my bedroom. But, I've got all these project lamps that I really need to get taken care of and I promise that when I do rewire them, I will include you guys and I will show you. But anyway, this is my haul video. I hope you enjoyed. I think we covered everything. We didn't cover the value of this, but I think we'll cover that once I've decided what I'm going to do with it. Because in the condition it sits right now, without its crystals and with this little knobby 
bulb thing that's just ridiculous and very sad and pathetic. I'm thinking it would probably sell for like 45 to $50. It's not gonna, I, I, even that's probably being pretty generous. It's just not in very good shape. But once I put the work into it, it could probably sell for a bit more, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So this was my haul. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. And um, sorry for dragging you along on another like lamp rant, but it's what happens when you get with the lamp lady. If you haven't already, make sure you go check out my shopping video over on my Relic Recoverers channel. Um, we had a lot of fun shopping for this stuff, a little bit too much fun. There was Demogorgons and all sorts of shenanigans involved and you'd be missing out if you didn't go check it out. So um, make sure you go check that out. And I will, oh, and I put a link to that down in the description. I will catch you guys next time. All right, later, bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've spotted something that you just can't live without, don't worry. I've put a link to our Etsy store down in the description.